What's up guys? Today we're gonna to review the Hay Bike Explorer. It's a 20 amp hour fat tire electric bike with a step through frame. Pow! And there is something a little bit different about this bike. It's not the wheels and tires. We get the same exact knobby tread pattern on four inch wide by 26 inch tall, 160 millimeter Tektro rotors. What is different, however, is the battery. Well, really, the battery location and style. But before we can get to it, we gotta get the keys. So flipping that key is actually turning on and off the light. The battery has a handle on it. First one I've seen like this. Oh, there's the charge port. Down here on the bottom, we can see it's listed as a 20 amp hour, 48 volt system, max discharge current of 25 amps. Hey Siri, what's 25 times 48? That is a 1,200 watt peak output battery. Got a pretty, pretty beefy rear rack that comes pre-installed and a uh, rear light. And it has a hay bike branded 48 volt, 750 watt rear hub motor, seven gears on the shifter. And I'm noticing a long chain stay. Want to get that battery on the charger. Pedals, manual, some tools. Charger, they give us a three amp charger. Pretty big charger, pretty big battery. Oh, so check it out. This one has three battery positions on and locked to frame. Off, locked to frame. And I had to turn it a little bit further to unlock it from the frame and get it off. On, off. Oh, you push it in a little bit there. Okay, there we go. So a little different storage location of the battery. We'll see how it affects the handling of the bike here soon. Kind of like a 911 with the engine in the back. We'll see if it performs like a 911 though. So yeah, that's the battery. Got a little button here. Let's charge it. This one has a slightly different connector than usual. And the bike itself is only front suspension, but the seat does have a little mini suspension thing built into it. Pretty typical hay bike seat. We've seen this before. Front suspension is pretty basic. There's a basic open and lock adjustment. Here's the handlebars. Gray ergonomic rubber hand grips. Dedicated horn and light button. Uh, interesting panel of operations. Display, seven gears. Same old Shimano gearbox. And quarter twist throttle on the right. Mechanical disc brake levers. They seem okay. The bars come back maybe an inch this, this way. Not really much of a rise at all. There's some mounting points up here for like a rack. Speaking of mounting, there is a water bottle holder mounted on there already for you. Actually somewhat unusual to see that feature on a bike. I know, all one dollar. When the battery is removed, there's the big void behind, between the wheel and, what do you call that post? Typically the batteries are kind of up here. It'll change the handling, less weight on the front, so maybe the front suspension might work a little better. I'm really just curious to try it. What is this lever? Oh wow. Oh, that's so you can get the battery on and off. How interesting. There is no fancy app on this one, but it gives you the, shows you how to change all your settings and stuff. In the manual, default speed is 20, but we can crank it up to 28, maybe beyond, we'll see. Says to inflate your tires to 20 PSI. They're on 11 now. We'll set it to 15. Because there is no rear suspension, we'll run these a little bit lower to give us a little bit more cushion at the expense of range. Good thing I checked, the front one's only six. Try this thing out. Pop the hood, the trunk, pop this thing in. I don't know if this matters to you, but but having the battery mounted back there does just kind of extend the whole length of the bike by a little bit. And as I mentioned, it will change the handling. At first I said it handled like a 911. <laughs> I mean, technically this would be more of like a mid mounted powertrain, not like behind the wheel mounted powertrain like an actual 911. Let's power it up. There we go. What do we get? Well, here's your display info. Tab through the menus so you get your miles. Mile per hour, average mile per hour, trip, odometer, max speed, average speed. And then it starts out default, five levels of pedal assist, zero. There's a button here to make the backlight of the screen brighter or less bright. Walk mode, I'm holding the camera with one hand here. If you hold this, it'll make it walk away on you. Let's try the horn. Pretty freaking loud. And headlight button. There's your headlight. Pretty, pretty fine. It's bright. Also turns on the rear light. Is it a brake light? Yes, it flashes when I'm grabbing the brake lever. Pretty typical little USB port underneath here. Does the throttle work on zero? Nope, it does not. It's cranking on up to five. Oh, oh yeah, we got some torque. Face it. Registering, that thing lags. Registers, 
up to 30. Cuts you off at 28 electronically. Actually, it's dropping down. Oh, because it's 20. Out of the box settings will limit you to 20. So here's what I look like all on the bike. Seat is pretty much as low as it can go. And I'll throw the seat on max height. Six foot five, dude. All right guys, let's go explore on the hay bike. Starting with Strava. So what kind of torque does the hay bike explorer have? We'll find out. Cross this by full throttle, no pedaling again. Just a little bit of a rollout. Pretty decent torque. If I just helped it a little bit, like it'd be able to do the 20% grade. Uh, yeah, there we go. So with just a bit of a rollout here and we'll just get on it, give it a little bit of pedaling on pedal assist five. We can make it up this grade pretty easily, really. So it's a pretty decently torquey bike. Let's go ahead and bump this down to pedal assist zero. Throttle does not work on zero. What if you put it on one? So it gives you like less power to the throttle on one. So this holds us at about nine miles an hour on pedal assist one. So that's kind of nice. I like these bikes that they give you essentially like five levels of cruise control since, you know, one, it makes you go 10, two, bumps you straight up, feel that power, brings you to, uh, 14-ish almost immediately and then pedal assist three bump it up one that brings us straight on to 19 basically 20 so i think that's max speed out of the box uh four gives us a little bit beyond up to 20 oh 22 and pedal assist five okay no so it's holding us at 20. we'll get in and change those settings in a moment as for pedaling this bike if you put it on pedal assist one it definitely gives you like a quite, a, quite a bit of like torque, I guess you could say. Let's just stop completely and now start pedaling. Yeah, and it ooh, like floors it all at once. I don't know if you can change that ramp up or not. So it's got the same seven speed Shimano shifter we see on like almost all these bikes. Bump it on to pedal assist two, giving a little bit of pedaling. Gear two feels natural. Gear three, gear four, bump it on to pedal assist three now. So it is a cadence sensor, so it doesn't matter it doesn't give you any feedback based on how hard you're pressing on the pedals. That would be a torque sensor. Generally, like a more expensive bike has a torque sensor. This is pretty basic, dumb bike, I guess you could say. Power delivery is abrupt, which I don't mind, but it doesn't give you like any ramp up on that power at all. Well, maybe a little bit. So on pedal assist five, rolling like really slow, then if I start to pedal, yeah. Just like, jerk, ready, go, launch which makes for good acceleration times, but a little bit of a jerky ride. Now, considering what you get for the money on this bike, right now at the time I'm recording this video, this bike is 1400 bucks. It's kind of hard to find a fat tire e-bike with the big 20 amp hour battery pack for this price around 1400 bucks. Is it the prettiest bike? What corners are being cut on this bike? We will find out. I mean, the rotors are 160 millimeters and they are mechanical disc brakes, which is a little bit under what is probably standard. Whoa. For a bike of this size and weight, hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors is kind of more standard. We'll see how they perform though throughout the course of the day. As I mentioned, this one does have the seat post suspension, which I mean, can you call it suspension? It's got a little bit of squish to it. It's, it's nothing amazing, but you know, it, it takes a little bit of that bump out of the ride on the rear, which, you know, can put a little bit of strain on your lower back on some of these fat tire e-bikes. So front suspension helps and the battery being mounted further back on the bike changes the ride characteristics. I can definitely tell a different, whoa, look at that pothole. I can definitely tell a difference. Let's ride it off road just a little bit here. So yeah, I feel that rear suspension seat post absorbing the shock at the same time. It is kind of almost, yeah, it's like bottoming out. We'll stay off the road here. Let these folks have the right away because we got the monster truck that is pretty much what this bike is man a monster truck the monster truck of e-bikes let's get out here unfortunately we're limited to 20 miles an hour under throttle only will the bike allow us to pedal beyond 20 miles an hour is it class three out of the box or not let's see uh yeah it's it's kind of it's bringing us up to well enough to blow past uh road cyclists 25 24 25 and then it's it kind of tapers off and brings you back down to like only 20. so we're gonna have to change that version on over this is like the jeep wrangler of bikes you know i'd say it has a somewhat like 
utility look to it, like a like a Wrangler too. Throttle time. Downshift the gear too. These Shimano drivetrains, they work just fine. They're nothing special, but they change the gears how they're supposed to. Kind of confused on this accelerator. Like it like brings you up to like 25 and then it, it tapers you off and then brings you down to like 20. It's kind of interesting. I've never been on a bike like this. Yeah, it says there's a flash sale going on for $13.99 right now. Normally $1,900, but I find it hard to ask $1,900 for this bike. I mean, in 2023, there's a lot of options out there. And this one, I don't know, man. I feel like it just has a little bit of a dated look to it personally now this does have the ergonomic style grips there are no bolts on them so they will eventually rotate on you over time let's see how the bike accelerates from zero to 20 on its own with throttle only gps in my left hand ready go 10 17 18 19 20 it keeps going beyond 20 pretty fast 25 and then after 25 it tapers off and starts bringing you down a little slower kind of interesting so you get like a burst beyond 20. dude that was that was literally the hay bike this exact bike i just passed oh look at that seat that does not look comfortable oh buddy we got oncoming traffic Somebody wants to play chicken. Whoa, buddy, more oncoming traffic. One horsepower vehicles, just like this one horsepower vehicle. 750 watts is one horsepower. I wonder what happens if I run these over. Hey, more of the one horsepower crew out here. All right, let's go ahead and crank this thing up to the uh, legal maximum. So press and hold these two buttons. Just hold this bike. I'm just doing a review on it today. I I, where you can buy this one. So I think the top speed saved. I see another police dude up here. So I don't know how fast we should go right here. Now let's go for it, dude. So now it's going 20, 23. I don't know, I don't know. We're gonna have to try it later. So let's go ahead and try out the pedal assistant. Pedal assist lag, not pedaling. Pedaling, power and pretty much minimal lag, if any. Let's put it on gear one, pedal assist five, get a little speed here, see if we can get through the sand up the top. Actually, uh, not quite enough torque, not quite enough. Uh, I didn't lose my balance, it kind of just ran out of power, but very difficult task to ask from any e-bike, really. And cruising through here, it's always harsh if there's not suspension on the rear coming through here, but that little, rather cheap uh, seat post actually makes a pretty decent little difference going through there. I mean, it's, you could buy one of those for just, I don't know, 50 cents or <laughs> maybe not that cheap. They do make some higher quality ones you can buy for about a hundred bucks. Some sort of uh, competition going on here. There's another hay bike. That's the Mars. Got trouble. All right, let's give it a bit of a torture test. Suspension seat post makes pretty decent difference. With these fat tires going over this and go. Can it do it under throttle only on flat ground? Oh, we got to swerve and miss that. Oh, come on now. I should have downshifted a few gears. Downshift, downshift, downshift. All right, so we're making it through the sand. I got to help it by pedaling down in gear two, gear one, and the motor and controller is working, 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 working pretty hard here. So let's just cruise along. I'm going wide up in throttle here. I'm just gonna let this thing run uh, high power for, I don't know, a bit here. Full power, full power. Let's see if the motor can hold up though for a while. Oh, oh, look at this pothole. Somebody dug a hole. Maybe it was this guy right here, Spider-Man. Motor's working, man. I'm losing my balance. So this is like wide open throttle on the sand for about, I don't know, we could time that. It's struggling to get through this sand. Keep it going, keep it going. Lost my balance. All right, looks like we're gonna make it. Controller's not overheating or anything. I definitely have to give it some pedaling help. The motor is working, man. All right, so back here, just for zooming, taking off. All right, hopefully the controller holds up. Right back in it, full throttle. Dude, that chick just about darted out in front of that guy on the bike. It's dangerous out here, man. So as an experienced reviewer of e-bikes, I can honestly tell a difference with that battery being mounted on the back compared to the front. It like, it changes the handling of the bike. It makes it feel like a little bit more nimble than uh, when the battery's up front. Probably also helps it put a little more of that power down in the sand. Just having like all that weight over the rear wheel where this bike is powered instead of up front. All right, pedal assist five, let's run it up this hill, throttle only. Starting at 10 miles an hour. 
Now it's at 9.3. Yeah, it's pulling us up this hill just fine. Totally, totally fine. And here is the hill. We just went up. I don't know what the grade of this one is. According to the app, the uh, iPhone app here, seven degrees, seven degree incline on this hill converted to grade, seven degree slope would be about 12 0.25%, so 12% grade. That's the same as a California incline. It's another party out here again today. All right, into a headwind. Let's see what kind of top speed it can do on wide open throttle now. I changed the settings a while ago. Yeah, now it's now it's running us a little little higher. 20, 23 consistent. Got a little bit of a wipeout going on here and a traffic jam. What is this thing? So final thoughts on the Hay Bike Explorer. It's really not a bad bike. I don't particularly love the styling personally, but I do love that it comes with that 20 amp hour battery pack. And I enjoyed uh, just experiencing how it handles differently having the weight in the back compared to like up here on the frame. Overall at 1400 bucks, it's really not a bad price for a big battery on a 750 watt continuous output motor. It's not the torquiest of all bikes I've tried, but it does like to cruise at high speeds. And with that big battery pack, you can cruise at high speed for quite a long time. They do kind of skimp on the brakes a little bit compared to other fat tire e-bikes. I wouldn't really say that the brakes are a problem by any means, but the mechanical levers just don't feel as good as hydraulic. And the 160 millimeter rotors are a little bit less than we usually see at 180 millimeter rotors on a heavy bike like this. Pretty standard front suspension and the seat post makes it a little bit more cushy. Nothing amazing though but it definitely just takes a little bit of that pressure off your back but I mean you could buy a, a seat post like this for any bike. So let's head on home and see what the final range is on this bike. All right dudes ran the typical route 17 miles today hour and 36 minutes. The bike's display is showing two out of five bars. I was running it hard. It should have no problem getting like 40 to 60 miles on this bike though realistically like if you actually pedal it i didn't pedal this thing at all i was just using the throttle flooring it the whole time all day long that's just what i like to do when i have a big battery pack you can use it for range or you can use it to just go fast for a long time with the, with no effort so if you want to grab one click the link below the video in the description box of course that would help support my reviews here on tail heavy tv however if this is not the bike you're looking for you can watch this video next catch you next time